Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Ah, oh, that's better. Protectyourbubble.com. Proud sponsors of Swipe on Sky News. You're watching a Swipe aviation special from Milan on the show this week. We look at the airlines upgrading your travel experience. I see what the future of cabin crew training could look like. And a couple of famous sporting faces get caught up in some simulated travel action. Hello from Milan Malpensa, Italy's second largest airport. This week, we're taking a look at the airlines using tech to try and reduce delays and make travel easier and more fun. Here's Angela. Flying maintenance robots like this one could be inspecting aircraft in the next year. Buzzing around planes between flights, fully automated drones are being tested by EasyJet to spot signs of damage. Collecting data, footage is then sent back to nearby engineers for analysis. The airline says the process will save time and money. The conventional method of uh, inspecting the aircraft is using human beings who have to use uh, ladders, steps, cherry pickers to get to uh, 30, 40 feet in the air. That's time consuming, we have to move equipment around and it's also, it's, you know, it can be more dangerous than, than normal. The airline is also trialling the process of 3D printing to speed up the replacement process of cabin parts, like this, an armrest. As well as cabin parts, the technology is being used to create components for its next generation engines, and they are already on order. We're working with our partners in Snape and CFM, and they are already printing parts for an engine. And in our Leap engine, which we've selected, they use a 3D printing process to print the fuels nozzles, which are behind me, and it's normally made up of 15 manufactured parts, but it's printed in one piece. So it's much quicker and it's specifically designed. Cuts down on a lot of production waste. And what about the passenger experience? Airlines are introducing smart activity and data to try to make travel smoother and more fun. British Airways is among the carriers incorporating wearable devices, like the Apple Watch, to help with boarding. One of the big issues that passengers always have is when there is a disruption, when your flight is delayed or cancelled, the biggest complaint is we don't have information. And these um, devices, these smart devices, are a fantastic idea. You know, they, they enable passengers to get information on a mass scale in, in real time very quickly. Passengers are also being encouraged to bring their smart devices on board for in-flight entertainment. Experts say tablets could replace the traditional TV screens completely in the future cutting costs for airlines, however, Wi-Fi charges for passengers can be high. But here's one you can share for free. Virgin Atlantic has introduced cabin spots for what they call sky-high selfies, enabling you to take a photo and post it online from 35,000 feet. And for that great scenic snap, how about this? The Airbus concept plane shows how technology could be applied in the future. It looks good, but you will have to wait until 2050 to see it. Maybe not so good if you're afraid of heights. Angela Barnes, Sky News. Well, it's not just the planes and the passengers getting a tech overhaul. Here, they're demoing some new kit to help with cabin crew training. And with me is Gary Smith. And what is this? Um, these are Oculus Rift goggles, and these are uh, fairly standard hardware, but these allow the uh, wearer to see whatever that is displayed on screen in three dimensions in real life. Oh wow, this is, this is really lifelike, especially because I've got someone else's seat right in front of me, yeah, just so what, like on a real what plane. you can see is effectively just like being on an EasyJet aircraft in our cabin, <laughs> even down to the details like the orange trim. And the, and carpet. The, and the carpet. I can see right up and down the aisle. And, and because it's so realistic, that means that when we use it for training, our, our crew will absorb the information much more quickly than they would if, for example, it was on paper like it is today. So why else would a crew member benefit from using a virtual cabin? Well, obviously we have a lot of crew and um, they all require training and recurrent training. And because of this technology, that means we don't have to use real aircraft or real aircraft mock-ups. Are there not we enough just... planes to go around then for the real well, no, training? Well, no, obviously we like the, the planes to be flying as much as we can. <laughs> yeah. Now, stepping away from the airport so we can take in some of the sights here in Milan, here's a roundup of some of this week's other tech news. 
Engineers at Stanford University have created a computer that runs on water. It's taken nearly a decade to produce a special chip, which is operated by moving water droplets within a magnetic field. The makers want to design a new class of computers that can control and manipulate physical materials instead of electronic information. Today we're announcing Apple Music, the next chapter in music. Apple has finally announced its new music streaming service, which could rival the likes of Spotify. Apple Music will let users stream and share tunes and videos, and there'll also be a 24-hour internet radio station called Beats One, broadcasting worldwide. At its developers' conference, the tech giant also confirmed Apple Pay will be coming to the UK next month. A new kind of personal assistant launched this week. Awesome allows you to text it your requests, whether it be booking a flight, ordering a takeaway, or even hiring a camel for the day. The service runs on a mix of artificial intelligence, algorithms, and actual human assistants. Now, daydreaming about your next holiday just got a bit more real. A hotel chain invited guests to get teleported with a virtual reality travel experience using Oculus Rift technology. England Rugby Sevens players Jack Walsh and Christian Lewis Pratt were among the first to test it out, visiting a beach in Hawaii and the top of a skyscraper in London. I'm not one for technology, but it's great. You stick uh, your virtual glasses on, you get your headphones on, you stand on the platform, and it really just immerses yourself into these places. So I was walking through a hotel lounge and suddenly I'm wished off to Hawaii. Feel sort of water splashing in your face and you're on a beach in Hawaii. Uh, and next thing you're overlooking the shard and getting dropped over a tower so it's really cool uh, didn't think those sort of things existed and to be able to sort of travel just by sticking some glass on it's a lot nicer than sitting on a 12-hour flight ah oh, the sun is shining we're away from home but if it's not your turn to jet off on holiday just yet our games reviewer gav has a few virtual ones for you so 80 Days fits in perfectly with the theme of like travel and interactive storytelling because it's basically an interactive novel. Like some have argued, it's not really much of a game, but it's out on mobile, so if you are going on holidays or you go and traveling, you can take it with you. And it's kind of loosely based on Jules Verne's Around the World in 80 Days. So you're tasked with getting around the world and circumnavigating the globe in the best way possible. If you finish the game, you've probably seen about 3% of the entire game, which makes it pretty big. Like, I've done it a few times, and I'm trying to, you know, get the best route possible all the time. And it's just full of these, like, tiny Easter eggs that not many people have actually found. There's only, like, a handful of players that have found some of these Easter eggs, so you can really sort of make your stamp on this world. Broken Age is a sort of like old school point and click adventure and it's from the same people who brought you stuff like Grim Fandango and Monkey Island and it was one of the most successful kickstarters ever but the game is so good so it was released in two parts and you take control of a boy character and a girl character and the boy character is voiced by Elijah Wood but it's actually I think the girl's character whose story is the more interesting of the two and it's a big sweeping adventure that spans like galaxies and stuff like that. But it is a perfect game to play if you're traveling because now it's out on the PS Vita. So you have this like giant, giant adventure storyline in the tiny, tiny thing, which is really good. At first glance, Sun the Sea looks like it might be quite a nice little adventure game, but it's actually really ruthless and hardcore. So at the moment, it's only out on Mac and PC. And you're basically tasked with being this steamship captain going across this sea. And you kind of make up your own story and you make up your own backstory and your ambitions are sort of made by yourself. So if you want to be, you know, this ruthless captain, you can. Or if you want to be the most famous pirate there is, you can do that as well. So it's kind of odd in the way that you sort of make up your own stories and things like that. Because you run into these amazing quirky characters and you have these crazy little adventures. And then if you go and talk to your friends they would have had a completely different experience to you, which I love stuff like that. And it, as I said, it's really ruthless because if your character dies, that's it for that character. You don't get to see that character again. But you never feel cheated in that way because you've had this amazing experience with this character for that little amount of time. Well, that's it for our speedy trip to Milan. Don't forget you can stay up to date with all the latest tech news on Sky News for iPad, our smartphone app, skynews.com and our YouTube channel. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Ah, oh, that's better. Protectyourbubble.com. Proud sponsors of Swipe on Sky News.